So welcome everybody. My name is Attila Kovács. And my name is Krzysztof Sobodosz. And uh, we are talking about uh, how to develop and test at large scale. This is a, uh, a project uh, to, together uh, made by the academy and the industry. And I represent the academic side now. So we are living in a wonderful world. Our world is very simple. You can, oh, how to start that? Can you help me to start the video? Thank you. So uh, we are living in a simple world. Um, all we have, all you have, you have defined test processes, good methodologies. Uh, you have product quality. Um, you have no or maybe medium risks um, during your projects. Um, um, you, uh, you have appropriate resources. You have enough money always. Uh, you have time for quality. Um, you have excellent human resources. Uh, you are well educated and, uh, and motivated uh, people. So, so um, you are able to connect all people of the world. Um, you are able to tell stories. You are able to measure, and, uh, and, uh, and the measurement is always correct and, and, and everything. So, or not, what do you think? Are we, we are living in a, in a canyon? What do you think about it? So, we have challenges, I think, in, in development and testing area. And you see just a few of them. Um, our systems have a huge number of components. Uh, we are huge teams. We are various technologies. Um, in our systems, the infrastructure utilization is, uh, is volatile, so it's not so easy to, to do. Um, our systems are, are diverse uh, in development and testing laboratories. So it's not so easy to, to, to reproduce bugs and fixing them in any cases. Um, we face with the problem of continuous environment setup and teardown problems. And, uh, and you can, you can uh, maybe um, give other examples as well. But the main problem, the main problem in IT systems, in, in development and testing, in our opinion, is complexity. Again, complexity, complexity. So what do we mean by complexity? It's such a big buzzword, but let me show you an example. The test system that you can see on my right and the left contains more than a million lines of script codes, organized in more than a thousand files. Each of the small dots you see on the screens is just a script file, and the connection between them is just an import, a dependency connection. This system is a test system developed for more than 10 years and mostly developed by at least 150 people in different organizations, in different continents, in different time zones. What do you think? Is this big ball of mud a good architecture? Please raise your hand if you think this is how test systems should be organized. No one is doing. So let's try the other way. Do you think this is bad architecture? Please raise your hand if you believe so. Oh, I see a hand in the back, so my voice reaches there too. Actually, we were really surprised when we first drew this because we found that there was no previous research on how test systems should be architectured on large scale. So we analyzed it. And we have found two very interesting properties. Although this big ball of mud looks really horrible, if you would pick any two points on it, the shortest distance would have at most five other script files. And also the dependencies seem to be completely chaotic, but they actually follow the power line distribution, where there are only a few nodes with many connections to other scripts, and many nodes with only a few connections. That's what people call scale-free property. But this is very high level. 
So we wanted to build up our research from ground. We defined more than 40 code smells, properties of the code which are not exactly problems, but usually used incorrectly. For example, if you would like to send on the network a big chunk of bits, it's OK to send a 30 character long string completely with zeros and ones, but if you have that in the code, it becomes completely unmaintainable. We have analyzed the we, we, we have analyzed all test suites on the www.tt3n3.org page where you can find open source test suites developed by the European Telecommunication Standardization Institute and the third generation partnership project for testing communicating systems. And we have found lots of issues, some in the hundreds, some in the thousands in every project we have analyzed. But these are just numbers. How do we make managers understand the cost of this? We sit down with test system architects, test developers, and test maintainers, and ask them to help us estimate how much it would cost to fix one issue. If it's in the easiest to fix context, if it's in the hardest to fix context, or somewhere in their main or daily practice. And we have seen that each system contains at least hundreds of man hours of work to correct. Or in the worst case, maybe 10,000s of hours. And please don't be mistaken, although we have hidden the names of the project, the intelligence transportation systems is also there on the list. Then we went back to seeing the architecture and created a visualization where all those scripts files that are not connected to the system are elevated up above the graph. And then the, the nodes, the dependency is shown as a layered architecture. And we noticed something really peculiar. I said, there are test suites from Etsy and from 3GPP. And they were completely different. All Etsy test suites looked the same, and all 3GPP test suites looked the same. But the ones produced by the different companies were completely different. For example, as you can see on the left, or in your case on the right, in Etsy test cases or test suites, above like a 10 scripts, there are always modules that are not connected to the system. In the case of 3GPP, we haven't seen one such test suite. In case of Etsy, you can see that they create a very tall architecture with a minimum amount of modules or scripts on each level. 3GPP seems to be a bit more well balanced. So we were like, yeah, this will grant us the Nobel Prize. But then we realized that actually at the end of the 60s, this was already told or seen by Conway, who said that companies creating complex products are actually replicating their communication structure in their product structure. It's not technical guys creating the architecture, but the company's architecture. And please don't forget, we are speaking about huge test systems, about test systems. So next question may be, uh, what would be the evolution of test systems? What has effects on, on test systems? What do you think? Uh, when you introduce Agile in your project, it has an effect or not? What do you think? Uh, when you increase your, your workflow, workforce, it has an effect or not? When you change your management, project management, line management, uh, uh, or change your architect, system architect, uh, it has an effect or not? When you introduce tools, for example, quality assurance tools have an effect or not? Or when we merge systems, what happens? We had the luck to study the evolution of a large test system for a five-year period. For each day, we have measured the numbers of code smells in it. We are showing you one of these code smells. If I remember correctly, the magic strings. On the x-axis, you can see the dates, and on the epsilon, the number of occurrences present at that date. Actually, this is not really one test system. 
pretest systems, because there was one which was developed from the end of 2009 till 2012, or the end of 2012. The other was developed from the beginning of 2012 till the end of 2012, and they were merged to be a one test system. It is clearly seen that the merge created a big jump. As the sources were added together, so the issues were also added together. And I have to say that those drops, they aren't related to any historical facts. It was just that someone corrupted the project descriptor file and our analysis tool was not seeing a big part of the files. But what do you think? What else had an effect? Or what else did not have an effect on the evolution of this test system? Anyone? Any guesses? Okay, not really. Then let me tell you a bit of this, of this system. Back when there was this monetary crisis, the system architect had to abruptly leave. From each team working on the project, there was a system architect selected, and then a forum was created. Along the lines, Agile was introduced. Teams were changing from waterfall to scrum, then experimenting a bit with Kanban, up to trying their own mixtures. Continuous integration was also introduced. The number of people working on this system has more than doubled since the beginning. And I have to admit, our code quality analyzer tool has also appeared without providing any change in the trends of the growing of the uh, code smells. However, there were some changes in a few cases only. On this graph, you can see that in this case, in the case of this code smell, there were three times when somehow the quality improved. In the first case, a tester simply found it too boring to maintain that bad of the system and spent a few hours of his own time to clear it up. And in the other two cases, we have organized hackathons where people could volunteer for doing whatever they wanted for a 16-hour change, 16-hour time frame. And then we were again saying, now this will grant us the Nobel Prize, because we have seen that test systems follow a completely predictable pattern of growth. But again, no dice for us, no cigar, because in the beginning of the 70s, already Lehman predicted that test systems and every complex software system follows a predictable pattern of growth. In fact, later, Tursky or study already showed that by taking after the storming period two or three measurements, either at the release times or a few months apart, you will be able to predict with 6% accuracy of how much of something will be in the software. Unless someone tries to change that metric specifically or the product dies. So some conclusions. Um, and test system evaluation. So, the existing uh, larger test systems are never complete and continue to evolve. It's a surprise, mm, maybe not, maybe not. But as they evolve, their complexity will grow unless there is some, some solution to solve these issues. A surprise. Maybe not. The evolution of a test system shows similar attributes than that of software systems. The surprise, mm, a bit. The change in management, uh, tooling supports, lifecycle uh, change, uh, even a merge, affect only only a little to the dynamics of the evaluation. A surprise? Maybe yes. So we should go into the details, and uh, in that case, we we um, made a, a questionnaire about 50 questions, and uh, four of them you can see here. We want to show you the result. So the first question is. Um, 
regarding a survey on IT people, what mindsets are uh, important to, to, to give an answer uh, to the complexity problem? Second question is, which are the most known techniques which we are using? I mean, IT people using. IT people means developers, testers, uh, managers, and uh, technical writers. Where is knowledge coming from? And do people care about anti-patterns or not? Knows anti-patterns or not? Our survey was filled in by 456 people from this Hungarian region, although it was available on the internet, so maybe some Chinese guys have also filled it in. We don't know. But we were asking them, what do you think? What is the most important mindset, or how important the developer, tester, manager, and technical writer mindset is in a software development project? And we were delighted to find that the tester mindset was either the most important or the second most important for all groups, testers, developers, managers, and technical writers. And this is not just because they are unexperienced or something like that, because in each experience group, we saw the exact same thing. People with less than two years of experience said that development and testing skills are the most important in a software development project. And people with more than 10 years of experience also said that testing and development mindset are the most important in a software development project. So we were a bit surprised when in another question we asked them, what techniques do you know of these fields? And we have found that almost nine out of 10 persons knew testing techniques. Almost nine out of 10 persons knew management techniques, but only a bit more than a half of our respondents new development techniques. It's kind of like surprising, but it's also enforcing or showing the importance of testing. It's not just thought to be one of the most important mindsets, but is also known, or at least our respondents said that they know their te these techniques. We can't prove that. But where is all this knowledge coming from? We also asked in our survey, where do people learn all those knowledge that they use or find useful, most useful in their day-to-day -day work? And they selected self-study and on-the-job on training to be the most useful in providing information for their day-to-day -day work. But actually, formal training fell behind. And as you can see, it happened in all experience groups. Surprisingly, formal training proved to give less knowledge than trial and error style learning. So where is all this knowledge coming from? We also asked people, what do they use for their day-to-day -day learning? What sources they use to get new knowledge? And yes, internet forums and blogs, maybe cat videos, colleagues, these were the most important. And coming from the academic side and presenting at a conference, I have to admit that most people don't seem to have access to cutting edge knowledge, attending conferences and reading research papers. Maybe we should do something about that. This might be the reason why anti-patterns are so prevalent. Structures or algorithms that shouldn't be used but are still used. We asked in this survey, how much do you know of anti-patterns? And to our surprise, most of the respondents said that either they have never heard about that or simply don't care. If you look at the chart, you can see that in all cases, in all fields surveyed, at least 60 to almost 90% of the respondents said that I have never heard of them. I have heard of them, but I don't know what they are or I know of them, but I'm not really concerned. And you can also see one more very interesting part, because testing is in the worst case, almost reaching 90% on this chart. 
So, um, short conclusion, what you heard about. Test systems uh, can be huge and are comparable to the tested systems in all examined aspects. Size, complexity, code smells, architecture, and so on. And uh, we measured that we have the same scalability challenges in testing as we have faced on in, in software uh, systems, developing software systems. Although the developers and testers' mindsets are important for, 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 for everyone, much more people know testing techniques than development techniques. I think it's a surprise for me. The most important sources of knowledge are on the job training and, and self study, mainly from internet forums and blogs. This is reality. And uh, unfortunately, most people do not know or don't care about anti patterns. And uh, to finish, uh, uh, to conclude uh, something, so uh, to bring home something, um, we, we, we faced the challenges. Challenges of size, challenges of complexity, challenges of using standards uh, written uh, independent organizations, uh, challenging of, of uh, designing architecture, challenging of education, and, uh, and scalability. Sooner or later, you will uh, face the problem of scalability, I'm quite sure. Um, and uh, my opinion is that, that the agile, the, the model-based testing, the continuous integration, continuous delivery uh, give some answers for the question of complexity. So the main point is complexity. And uh, well, welcome in the future. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? I saw your hand, sorry. Okay, if, you, if there are no questions, thank you for the presentation. There's a question. <laughs> In sorry, the first sorry. line. I'm, I'm surprised also about uh, your observation that uh, uh, testing is, is better known than development techniques. Uh, can you tell me a little more about how you defined knowledge of testing? Because in my experience, it's the opposite. In this case, in our survey, we offered like more than a dozen options of testing techniques, development techniques, management techniques, and technical writing techniques. And people were able to choose any of them that they thought to know. So in this case, we are not able to say that, yes, they know function testing or they know Scrum because we don't have any way to validate that knowledge. But actually, just the fact that so many people said that they know testing techniques and management techniques, and only so few have said that they know development techniques, and Singleton was the most known, with only every second person knowing it, we were surprised. So we will send you the paper. Uh, we can send you the paper. Read. It's a huge, huge one, unfortunately. <laughs> Much to read. Okay, then thank you very much. Thank you for the Okay. So, before leaving. I have an exact definition of okay. what complexity is. Because many users claim their software is complex, but it's really just big. There's too many elements in their system. Is there a accepted definition of complexity. Where is the voice coming from? Com complexity, <laughs> okay, it's not, no problem. Complexity, uh, it's from, okay. Complexity is um, not a simple notion, uh, like quality. Uh, what is software quality, you know? 
same question. Complexity can be measured uh, uh, from different aspects. Um, so it's, it's not, not, not a simple um, um, question of what is complexity, so hard to answer. There's many facts. OK, um, just an example uh, using a graph, uh, just a, an architecture. Um, one aspect of complexity can be measured um, um, how many edges, how many nodes uh, the graph uh, have. So just one aspect. But of course, uh, in reality, complexity can be measured in different ways, and it's not so easy uh, in any cases. But it is also important to note that we didn't say that something is the measure of complexity. What we are showing you is that no matter what we tried, we saw that software development and testing has similar properties. Architecture, what has an effect on the development, what trends are followed, whatever we measured. Test development seems to be similar to software development to a very high degree. And uh, maybe a bit later, maybe after five years, um, some, some of you people uh, will test the test system. So somebody has to care about guard guardians, you know. Uh, that's the, the main point of our talk. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Thank you again.